Hello guys, this is Avco, and I want to talk about the new character today. And we'll talk about my comment I made in a crossover. Another, I am skipping, because I am skipping this banner. Why? Because resources are limited. But I will say that Glow Dragon is worth Even it. In the shadows, unleashed during a massacre. This is the character I'm going for, though. Um, Arloon. I'm going for Arloon. But uh, let's go to this guy. This guy's an AOE get AOE player player phase unit. Um, there are notable aspects of his kit that I want to go over. As if you have the opportunity to summon him, I think you should. If you have the resources to summon him, I think you should. If you can't, then don't. I mean, this game is really expensive. So, if you can't, you can't. But, of course, he's part of light. So, yeah, he's part of light. So, you know, his value goes up just from that. But this guy is more pure AoE damage dealer. And most of his kit is about increasing his damage. But as far as stats go, his speed is a little lower than some of the premier DPSs who get 107 and 106. Uh, his attack is really good, though. His HP is moderate as well as his defense. But that's okay. He's not really supposed to be up front or even in the middle road anyway. So let's start with his uh, raid skill, Deafening Thunder. Um... He inflicts like damage 192% of his attack, which he has really a high attack, to the mid and back row. This is really good because the tank positioning allows them to guard the back row characters, which makes Dragon Master Don that much more sought after because he can protect these guys. But for tanks like Undead Lord and uh, Puppet Master and... Celestial Spirit, they can't protect their um, units from this attack, which is really good because the squishies in the back, if they die, you pretty much win the battle because they're usually your healers, your revivers, and your key DPSs. So mid and back rows where they tend to hang out at, and you get to hit there with this skill. It gets worse, though. Each stack buff can deal damage equal to 10% of his attack, up to 292%. If reaching above 10 stacks, damage turns into true damage. This rarely happens, but if it does, it's almost game over. Dragon Fury, this is this is really good. After uh, I, I Glow Dragon <laughs> uses Rage Skill, aside from Counter Attack, Basic Attack deals damage equal to 200% of his attack to a random enemy. In the mid back row, with a 50% chance of adding charging effect to Glow Dragon. I don't know the name. This is good because, once again, this guy is hitting the back, the mid row, and totally negating your tank. Once again, Dragon Master Don is a really good counter to this. As you can position him actually in the mid and back row, and he will take damage for those units. So, one weakness of this guy is the uh, Lunar Shadow Dragon Master Don combo actually really hurts him. As once she gets counterattacked, she she is going to deal damage to the mid and front row. So you're hurting people, and Dragon Master Don is going to counterattack this guy to oblivion. So. He's not as great as advertised, but if you can get around Dragon Master Don and Lunar Shadow, then he's really, really good. He just has some counters, so that's the point. But you, when you when you have your single target attack increase to this level, it becomes something dangerous. So charge actually deals additional damage equal to 50% of attack when Fire Your Dragon Awakens. The effect rises to 100%. Last three rounds and cannot and cannot be stacked. Excuse me. Really excellent skill. It really allows you to pick apart the enemy team. Of course, you get your stat uh, self buff, which is really dumb. Oriental dragons, really? Is that the best they can come up with? Oriental dragons. Okay. Reverse dragon skill. 
Increases his damage by 10%, which is really good. And Dragon Rage. All buffs cannot be purged, and this effect will last until the battle ends, which is really good. At the end of every round, he gains one stack with extreme intention. This is really good. This is so good. Why is this good? Because the longer this dude lives, the more damage he deals on his AoE. So you're guaranteed like strong raid swings where the raid skill typically decides the battle. He can do that effectively with this buff, which is really amazing. Let's go into his uh, potential awakenings real quick. All right. Deafening Thunder, additional effect. Upon killing an enemy, uh, his buff will last an additional two turns, which he's supposed to do. So this is not as bad as it is for other people as his kid is designed for him to be a um, target eliminator. So he's supposed to kill people. So this is really good. And he has the stats in order to do it, unlike other units, because of the massive damage increases he gets in his kit. So this is really guaranteed. Okay, this is where it kind of gets busted. Charging attack bonus is increased to 100%. That's busted. And the increased damage by 10% is really busted. When you look at his whole kit, he's designed to do one thing. That is lay down the pressure, weaken units, and eventually kill them. He's a bit like of a one-trick pony. He doesn't have like good status effects like uh, element, Elementalist and um, Anubis. I think that hurts him in the long run. As I see in the agent servers that people typically prefer Anubis and Elementalist over him for that very reason. If you stun the opponent, then you're, you're really controlling the game. And he can't do that. Like there's nothing in this kit that says that he can stun the opponent. But the thing about it is, he actually works well with those two. His perfect combination, really, to be honest, is Elementalist. It is Anubis. And it's also Super Twin. And the last light or dark you want to put on there is your choice. Um, some people I've seen actually use Morian. And your goal with this strategy is to rush the opponent and blow them away with AOEs. And this can work because this guy is pretty lethal. Even in the second and third turn, you're supposed to get killed. So that, that's really amazing. This character is really good. It's just that he is for a specific type of box. If he's not for your box, then you should not summon him. But most people run AOE, so I don't see that being a problem. But some people are trying single target, so we'll see. But anyways, if you like my content, hit the like, share, subscribe button. I'll get back to you. Have a great one. Laters.